Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Prior to that, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist. I've worked in research and development and uh, filed several patents. Tonight is my uh, second report in my most recent series of investigations on media uh, censorship. And I've got a doozy for you tonight. You definitely should stay tuned. Okay, so uh, in the last video, I talked about who are the owners of the media. Uh, and here, very briefly, are the owners Vanguard, T. Rowe Price, BlackRock, Fidelity, State Street, and Capital World. These are the institutional investors, so to speak. Okay, then there's also the personalities that founded the company, people like Rupert Murdoch with controlling interests, the individuals. And we'll get to that, but we're going through it layer by layer. So here's the companies that control the media. Walt Disney, General Electric, Sumner Redstone owning these properties. Uh, Time Warner owning CNN, Rupert Murdoch's News Corp owning Fox and Wall Street Journal. And the point that I made last time is that then if you uh, go in and look at the ownerships uh, uh, via, you know, finance.yahoo.com, put in their ticker symbol, um, and then you'll see who owns uh, equity in each of these companies. And uh, so what we found here, uh, investors in television media, uh, Vanguard, State Street, BlackRock, FMR, which is Fidelity, Price, T. Rowe, Price, Dodge and Cox, Capital World Investors. Here's another Vanguard uh, fund, um, Bank of New York Mellon, another Vanguard fund, Spider is an index fund, Dodge and Cox is uh, listed twice. So, the, you know, it's a fairly small group of institutions. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to now go and take a look at... Um, so why are they suppressing Ron Paul was a particular story we're looking at now. I'm also curious why they suppressed the many facts about the Libya war. Those are the two things I've tracked really closely recently. Um, so uh, in the last episode, we looked at equity ownership of um, these types of companies here. So uh, let me review what we did last time. Just real briefly. So here is a dump. Uh, tagging the, the outlet and their mother company of every position held and then um, we get to a dump here pretty soon okay and this is where they're all sorted by company okay and you can see that actually um, there's more consolidation one can do Invesco has different ways of being named um, but at any rate uh, then what we do is we list their specific positions and summarize, and there it is. And um, let's see here. Uh, here are the actual valuations. And I do have this uploaded to, um, to microtopia.org, or if I don't, it will be tonight. So here's the bombshell. <clears throat> okay. Let's take a look. Oh, this is an interesting trivia. Uh, uh, murder rates by country. U.S. is about in the middle here. Um, so look at all these. Afghanistan, I think, has less deaths, uh, murders per capita than we do, according to this. And these are the most peaceful company, countries. Anyway, top ten banks. Fidelity, State Street, Fidelity, State Street. So two of these institutions also have big positions in Bank of America, HBC, J.P. Morgan, and Citibank. Although I haven't done the, the work on that. I pulled that off of the web. I happened to pull it off, but it's interesting. I haven't even gotten to banks yet. Okay. So here are all the government contractors in the United States. Uh, so we have uh, Lockheed Martin does 16.7 billion with the U.S. government a year, 11.4 for Northrop, 10.4 for Boeing, 6.7 for Raytheon. Science Applications International seems to make creepware for the secret police. Um, they even did a, a remote viewing project, which is basically the mysticism that you can leave your body and see other things, astral projection. They call it remote viewing. Um, General Dynamics Corporation, we've all heard of them. The Kellogg, Brown, and Root, one of everybody's favorites. And then Level 3 apparently gets their largesse. Uh, then we get into, like, PC makers down here. Okay, so those are the big government contractors. Okay, so now, 
who are the owners of each of them. So I did the same thing. I dumped everything off of finance.yahoo.com. I have a cleaner one than that. Here it is. Okay. Everybody's positions. Then we subtotal it. Then we summarize it. And so state, okay, so here's the, the uh, bombshell. So the total valuation we're looking at for what we've tracked is $73 billion into the media companies. The media companies would be worth about that amount if they weren't appended to uh, conglomerates like uh, General Electric and Disney. In my estimation, around $13 billion a pop for about six outlets. So now we've got the military-industrial complex. The primary, I only count the top seven wep, uh, weapons contractors along with uh, the creepy secret police software company. And look at this, State Street is number, uh, Vanguard is number one. The problem is my tagging system. All the yellow ones are Vanguard. If you add them all up, it's assuredly number one in media and in the military industrial stuff. Eight billion in uh, uh, Vanguard has what? Four billion, five, six, six point five, seven point two. Okay, Vanguard uh, and State Street are tied for first, and same with the media companies. BlackRock uh, has more into media than into uh, direct government contractors. But remember, not all of what they're doing is necessarily disclosed. There could be off-book stuff if, uh, for the military-industrial complex. And we aren't dealing with police or corrections yet either. Although I'm not sure if you're the top uh, 100 federal or top 100 uh, total. And then here's Fidelity. Uh, they have a billion into the military, the top six contractors, six billion into these media companies. Uh, T. Rowe Price, two billion into the contractors, four billion into the media. So these media companies have the same group of interests right here for as the defense companies. The only difference is Dodge and Cox doesn't have one of the top defense positions in the top six contractors. They might elsewhere. Um, and then we don't find Bank of New York Mellon directly invested. But guess what? The oh yeah, here it is, two hundred twenty-five probably. Um, and here's some more Fidelity money. Here's Goldman Sachs. So uh, that is incredibly creepy. So we got fifty-three billion accounted for in the direct investment to these six dudes, and um, the symmetry is quite stunning. So the next step is to figure out who owns these companies right here. Vanguard is an index fund, so it's, uh, it's in their interest to perpetuate the, uh, to benefit their investors. I, I, I can't say more than that for now. But this really shows us how dangerous the law of Citizens United is. Citizen United allows all of these companies, which are private equity firms, they, they don't have to list a single thing about their contributions to political parties. So what you have is you have publicly traded companies. So you get all the benefit of being able to liquidate your profits on the market uh, if you're one of these uh, people benefits from this, right? These are all more or less public companies. Then the c companies that have the majority of the stock tend to be private. So these are all, BlackRock is private. Um, Fidelity is majority owned by its founder. Um, so to be continued. But Citizens United allows us to, uh, we cannot find out what they're doing politically. But what we can say is that when a guy on CNN says that Ron Paul doesn't exist, is wacky and needs to be discounted, okay, CNN is owned by Time Warner. Time Warner, uh, there are stakes in Time Warner by all of these companies here. And these same companies all have stakes in these companies over here. And they're not entirely dissimilar investment ratios. Is that creepy or what? All right. Uh, very good then. Good night and good luck.